Ladies and gentlemen, today is May 5th, 2015, and this is the King Kill Show, episode 226, as the chat did confirm and correct me, almost misnumbered it, that was close, that was close, luckily I have you guys having my back. This is the King Kale Show, where we learn to be better artists, today is Tutorial Tuesday, and today we are going to be focusing on isometric views, isometric views. What is that? What could that possibly mean? Are we going to be learning geometry today? No, don't worry. Isometric is simply a fancy term. If you want to, if you want to impress your coworkers, just use that term when you're referring to an in-game angle when you're looking down on something. Think StarCraft or League de Leyendos, and that's what we're going to be drawing today. We're going to be focusing on Vi. We're going to be drawing Vi today. And just as uh, for reference, I'm going to be using this, the amazing piece by Paul Kwan. I did not draw this. I did not draw this. This is Zeronis' artwork, but I'm going to be using it as a reference. And speaking of Zeronis, speaking of Paul Kwan and Paul Kwan's Patreon, why not go on over to my Patreon and support the show? Shameless plugging. Because, because I had a great tie-in for this, just finished the Jinx piece from last week, and I released the PSDs. All of my PSDs from now on are going to be available through Patreon. So if you want to go check that out, if you're watching on YouTube, click that link down in the bottom right, and you can go and download the PSD and turn Jinx into Draven, like that. All you gotta do is unclip this line layer and she magically turns into Draven. I don't know how that happens, but anyway, yeah, go support Patreon. Uh, people on Twitch just posted the link in there so you can go check that out as well. All right, last but not least, let's take a look at the lovely Lane because you guys are awesome and submitting so much awesome work. Look at this. Look at this. I'm gone for like 10 days and you guys just blow me away with your amazing art. I love this, uh, this freaking Azir. <laughs> Azir, server Azir or, um, or McDonald's worker Azir. I forgot what he called it, but it was super funny. Uh, but yeah, you guys are getting so good. It's getting to the point now where I'm just going to like start looking at this stuff and like take notes off of your work and then like teach it in a tutorial or something like that. But you guys are freaking awesome. Uh, head on over, click that tiny URL, or rather type in the tiny URL. If you wanna to go to Facebook and check out all these pieces for yourself and go like the Can Kill Facebook if you wanna get some cookies or, or something like that. That's what I usually say, right? All right, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. As you can tell, I'm a little bit rusty and today, it is getting a little bit warmer outside here in Utah, in the Utah state. And because of that, I'm gonna be getting a little bit warm during this daily and I'm in bad need of a haircut. There's a lot of things working against me today. So if I do end up getting a bit sweaty, you will understand why. But regardless, let's go ahead and get into isometric views. Isometric views. All right, so we got our good old Photoshop open. Everything's working good. Everything is working good and we are ready to go. Okay, so isometric views, isometric views. Should I should I write it? Why not? Isometric views. The first part of this is to spell it correctly and I'm gonna be doing this all real time. So this daily might go a little bit long. It's gonna be a little bit more of a real time daily, a little more of a joint study session. Mm, I know you like these, I know you like these. So let's go ahead and get into it. So if we are going to be drawing Vi, we're gonna be drawing our character Vi Paul Kwan's character Vi, in a isometric view, the first thing that we're gonna do, before we get into all of the complicated stuff, before we start laying on like the cool pink hair and the goggles and all that, we need to first of all understand basics, basics. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to learn how to do is to um, basically incorporate a few different shapes that I like to use to create a body. And very quickly, I'm just gonna draw them over here because this is what we're gonna be using today. Okay, we're gonna be using our little acorn head shape, right? And then we're gonna move into the hourglass figure because we're drawing a sexy lady, right? So we gotta make sure we get that in there. Okay, so we're gonna be doing this. We got the hourglass figure. And this is actually a technique that I've taught you guys in the past, have I not? So we're going to be going over that once again, but now we're going to be applying it in a different way. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the hourglass figure, all right? I like to leave this space here for the legs. And many of you know, I like to draw with shapes, right? I like to sketch out my bodies with shapes instead of stick figures. No stick figures allowed here. 
Not in this dojo. Not in this castle. No, no. You will be banned. You will be exiled from the kingdom. So, uh, make sure you're using your shapes. I like to use simple ones. Again, noodle arms, noodle legs, okay? So basically, this is what we're gonna be focusing on, okay? So we got this, we got that. We got the arms coming down. Vi does have big hips. She has quite large hips. Again, this is not necessarily like a perfect rendition of it, but this is just to demonstrate the shapes we're going to be using, okay? Shapes we're gonna be using. Maybe we'll like throw one of these in there for like the rib cage or something. Keep in mind your center point for like the chest and all that. Uh, that's that's overcomplicating it. Screw it. Screw it. We're going back. We're going back. Okay, so this is basically it. This is it. Okay, we got the hourglass. We got the legs coming off, and then you know like the feet. Right. Let's not forget the feet. Simple, simple feet. A little deformed, but whatever. We're going to go forward with it. <laughs> because this is just for an example. Okay, so just keep this in mind. We're going to shrink this down to a minuscule size and move that over to the side. Because this is more so just to keep in mind, this is how we would draw those shapes from that angle. But now we're going to move over to isometric, okay? And this is us looking down, down on something. So an example, just as a quick idea, what we're going to be doing is we're taking a box like this and we're drawing it from a game angle, right? So you would see something more like this, okay? So this is an example of isometric views. And if you were to see through this, it would be more like that, okay? So we're taking this, turning it into a box. Taking a hot lady, turning it into a box. Taking by, turning it into a box. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to consider, consider, right? The ground plane. The ground plane is always good. The way that I like to do it is just by drawing an X. This represents your X and Y axes, right? Or basically the floor where your character will be positioned on top of. Okay. And you can kind of like, just keep it, I'll erase it a little bit just because you want to keep it more so just in mind. Just keep it in mind and try not to choke when you talk. That's also good. All right. So, the first thing you're gonna do is we're gonna draw in, hey, that hourglass figure. But what does that look like looking from the top down, right? Well, similar to the box, a good way to do it is say, hey, there's probably an oval right here because of where our shoulders are, right? And there's probably gonna be another oval down here where the hips come, right? And then we're gonna connect those things, okay? Can you see how we're already getting there? Oh, wow. This is amazing, right? And so let's go ahead and put on our good old shoulder ball things, <laughs> the things that represent where the shoulders are. And then we're gonna go ahead and draw the legs down. But this is where people tend to get a little bit lost, okay? So pay very close attention here. Close, close attention. The deformation of the legs, once they start going down, is actually very, very um, exaggerated, you would say. Exaggerated. So I want you guys to start playing around with shapes. What I like to do is to represent the top part of the leg. This is the thigh, right? The thigh going down to the knee. I will draw like that. And then basically what I will do is you wanna think about the calf that's happening within here. Like if you were to see through this leg, the calf would be coming right through there. And let me make sure you guys are still alive over here. Make sure you're not, you're not dying. Okay, you're good. <laughs> I have no idea what you guys are saying. Okay, so anyway, the calf is existing right there. And then a nice thing that I like to think about with like feet is that they have more of a tendency to go outwards, right? They have more of a tendency to curve out like this as opposed to in like that, okay? You wanna think about your shin bone, right? The bone coming from your knee down to your foot, okay? So you're gonna get something a little bit like that. And much like I've taught you guys, hey, look at this shape. Look at the shape that's going through here. Let's, in fact, let's zoom in on that. Let's zoom in. This bear's zooming in. Look at the shape that's coming through here, right through this leg. Oh, that looks like an S. Oh, so the same rule that applies here, because I tell you guys to work with an S curve in your legs, makes them look more natural, makes it look like there's weight on them. The same rule applies here, but now it is more distorted 
because you are basically tilting that S. You know, have you ever like drawn an S on a piece of paper and then tilted it more to eye level? It squishes it and it exaggerates it very slightly, okay? So make sure you got that curve going through there. All right, now let's move on to the other leg, the other leg, okay? And this one is actually quite a bit of fun because this one is actually going to be even more obscured. And this is the part where the X comes in handy because I want you to consider where the heel of this foot is resting on the ground plane. And I want you to consider where the other heel would have to go. Where would the other heel have to exist in order for this character to be balanced and not fall over, okay? Let's see, hey, look, it's like, there's the midpoint of the X. There's one balance point here. So the other balance point would technically have to be right around, say, this area, okay? And there you have, that's where the other heel or where the other balance point of your foot is going to go. So you know that basically we're gonna connect the dots now. Same thing, right? Here's the first leg or here's the first part of the leg. The knee's gonna be around, about right there, and there's gonna be a super heavy distortion that comes right through here from the knee down to the foot. And then you're gonna get something like, like a niece. You like that. Cool, huh? So now you have a properly balanced character with actually quite large thighs. We should probably trim those down a bit, Vi. I know you got big legs, Vi, but we're gonna have to trim those down just a tad, just a tad, okay? And then I like to make sure, like, I'm just drawing my feet as, like, they come to points, right? I just like to do that for simplicity's sake. It just makes it easier on me. It makes it easier to visualize, visualize. And we're gonna kind of refine this leg. And there you go, okay? Let's keep in mind where the uh, one thing that really helps me, I've told you guys this before, is imagine they're wearing like a one-piece swimsuit, right? And those lines where they go up towards the legs, those are actually like the points of bending. When someone bends their legs, that's where basically the pivot point is going to happen. So it's really handy to just draw those lines there. And it really helps when you are drawing in isometric views. Isometric views, how about that? All right, so next what we want to make sure that we do is let's touch on the chest a little bit. Let's touch on the chest because it's easy to draw somebody with just kind of standing normally. But if you'll notice, I put one of her feet, one of the feet is a little bit further in front of the other. We're adding some character, adding some a little bit more flavor to our poses. And one of the things that I really like to do with my characters, especially heroic ones and girls in general, is that it's good to make them stand with heroic posture, right? So their head is going to be slightly further back. Their chest is going to be out, right? Not like crazy out, but like you wanna have a little bit of that flavor in there. So let's go ahead and do that with the magic of the lasso tool. Let's go ahead and take this. Let's move it back in time and space, right? And then number two, we're actually going to take this first uh, oval that we drew and we're just gonna consider it like the middle point that comes up through here. So say here's the uh, belly here. Then we'll have like the rib cage. Sometimes it helps to draw in the rib cage. If I were to draw it here, that, that was what I was doing here when I did that and that. That's representing the rib cage. And then you have the boobs basically that go right there. And you have your lovely woman. So let's go ahead and replicate that from a 3D, thinking in 3D. Let's go ahead and draw those ribs coming up here. And then we have the bounteous bosom. I guess Vi doesn't have like huge boobs, but whatever. <laughs> whatever. We're just, you know, gotta make sure we know it's a lady, right? So let's go ahead and get that bounteous bosom in there. And we love that. Okay, cool. Very good, very good. So let's go ahead and connect it like that. And there you go. So you can see we're getting a little closer now, getting a little closer. Now, probably the most important thing that I want you guys to consider is how much distortion and actually overlap is happening. Like notice how the chest, especially because this is a girl, notice how much of the chest is actually covering the rest of the rib cage beneath. In fact, you could technically even distort this even more. 
it might even be more accurate to do it like this, you know, like have it more distorted like that, very slightly, right? Very slightly. Okay, like that, and then like that. Let's go ahead and bring these in. And one of the things, one of the reasons why I like to do it like this, why I like to do the line sculpting technique, is you'll notice I'm going around the edges and just kind of like changing little things, changing little tiny things about my edges, right? Little tiny things. Oh, an important thing right here. This is very, very important. The rib cage, as it comes down, you wanna make sure that you have this line. This line right here that's coming down, I'll put an arrow. Show a little bit of that overlap because that represents the basically the back muscle overlapping before it goes down the rest of the back towards the butt, towards the booty, booteus maximus, okay? And then same thing here. You wanna make sure you have a little bit of overlap happening here. This line represents, this line that I just drew right here, this represents the edge of the stomach, right? And then this little thing that pops out is basically the hip bone. This thing popping out right here, the hip bone. So you can go ahead and bring that back on in and go up like that, okay? Very good, very good. And one thing that I like to do is I just like to draw a little line coming from here, like a little shadow. Basically, this represents the edge of the rib cage. Represents the edge of the rib cage going downward. Okay? Also serves as a nice marking point for like the middle of the chest. Okay? So let's go ahead and shade, put a little bit of shading on dim boobies. And there you go. You can see your figure taking shape. Marvelous. Marvelous. All right, so let's go ahead and do our little test here. Let's go ahead and do our little flippy test. I'm gonna go and copy paste this. Um, all right, you guys are good. You guys are good, just checking on you, checking on you. <laughs> Flipping it over. Yeah, you can see, basically our character is taking shape. You can see the distortions happening in the legs. Everything's looking good. Oh, another thing that really helps to um, lay out your, or start thinking in 3D. Sometimes I like to draw the ellipses that would go through the leg. Like think as if she was wearing, actually she does wear stockings. So you can draw the ellipses of the stockings that would be there, you know? You can do stuff like that. And this curve actually would look more like this. Coming, like if she was wearing a one piece swimsuit, look more like that and it would curve around towards the butt like that, like that. Very good, very good. There's a bit of heavy distortion happening here, but you know what? I'm okay with it. Oh, there we go, there we go. Just had to kind of bring that foot in a little bit. Bring the arch of that foot in. Looks good. Yeah, drawing in ellipses always helps me out a lot. Like here, again, another ellipse down at the bottom of the ankle. Think of it as a sock, you know? Draw your sock in. And there you go. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the rest. I'm curious as to how much we'll actually be able to draw a Vi. This is probably going to be a multi another multi-part picture. But regardless, let's go ahead and get back to it. Flip it back. Let's move on to the next thing. All right, so I'm thinking that I wanna have a pose with her one arm like down, sort of like this, and then another one facing up because drawing these gloves in perspective is also another very important thing. Learning to draw mechanical things in isometric views can also be very helpful. So I think what I'll do today is I'll focus mostly on laying out the bare bones of what we're gonna be working with. Then in the subsequent weeks, we will start adding our details, adding the clothing on, and then we'll probably color it and this and that and all that good stuff. All right, but let's get back to this. I'll draw one of these gloves and then I'm gonna take some questions and then we're gonna go ahead and end. One of the things that I can see immediately is that her head is actually a little bit large and in charge. We should shrink that down just a tad. All right, so let's talk about 
flickering lights. <laughs> Let's talk about the shoulder muscles, or rather just how I like to lay out arms, easy ways to lay out arms. Okay, so the same thing that I talked to you guys about, sort of like a like an S shape that happens within the arm. Actually, is it kind of, it's sort of like an S shape. It just kind of has like one of these things going on. It has an S shape that kind of occurs naturally in it. Okay, so, and basically the way that you measure it or the way that you draw the S is by coming down, let's move in close, coming down, this is the edge of the bicep, right? And then you're gonna have one of these things. It's gonna go down and keep in mind, if you place your hand, if you stand and place your hand down to the side of your leg, you'll notice that it ends right at the middle of your thigh, right? So if we were to take this ellipse and draw a line out in space, right? This is technically where our hand would end. This is where our hand will end. I guess if your fingers are out. So she's gonna have like a giant fist thing. It's probably gonna go down further. But in general, that's the point where we want our hand to be, okay? So we got this S in there, right? Now let's go ahead and draw the other side, okay? So there's a little bit of an interesting thing that happens here. There's a bump that happens, depending on how muscular your woman is. Uh, in Vi's case, I'd imagine she'd have to be pretty muscular to hold up these giant fist things. So this first bump is going to represent our tricep, okay? Then we're gonna come down. Another bump is gonna represent the elbow. And then we're gonna come on down, come on down, all the way to the hand, to the hand, okay? And then basically on the other side of this S curve is where you'll draw one of, the, one of these things, right? And then you connect your hand. You have successfully drawn an arm. Hooray for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. Uh, you wanna put a little line right there to make sure that you show the, the edge of your bicep. Kind of goes up like that. And this light is bugging me. Why is it flickering? I think it's about time to get that thing replaced. A few things in this house need replacing. All right, so that's basic number one, okay? But keep in mind those ellipses, ellipses going down, ellipses going down. So actually the fist would probably end up being about kind of looking more like that, looking more like that, okay? So let's draw the other arm, okay? Same thing. Let's keep in mind we got our bicep coming out. We got the elbow. And a good thing to, you might ask, how did I know where to draw the elbow, okay? So one thing that I like to do is consider if you just measure off of your own body. If you put your elbow down to the side of your body, right? And then you take your hand and draw a line across, where does it meet? It meets right above your belly button, right? Sort of in that middle rib area. So you wanna consider, okay, well, if my elbow was right here and I lifted it, so like this point in space and I lifted it, it'd be right about right there, okay? You kinda wanna eyeball it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it will save you from being like, all right, let's draw this arm. All right, so I think like the elbow goes like there, and then it's like that, yeah! You can see immediately how that looks like, stretch arm strong, okay? So just keep that in mind, right? Middle of the ribs, middle of the ribs, draw it up, you lift it up a little bit, and there you go, there's your elbow. Gives you a good general idea. There's a lot of other stuff that you got to keep in mind with like the 3D plane and stuff like that. But this gives you, in fact, it's like something I don't even know if I could explain. It's just, it just looks right. You just got to do it for yourself. Do it for yourself. And you'll get the hang of it. All right, let's go ahead and sculpt these things back into place. Let's go ahead and get that arm in there. And we're going to have this other arm up. Have this other arm up like this. I actually want it to be coming straight at us. So it's gonna be kind of more like this. Or maybe it should be more out. Cause I want the overall shape of the fist to be like this. So again, look at what I'm doing here. I'm jumping straight to the armored arm, but I'm doing this because I want to basically have a shape existing. I want something to exist within this space. So this is something that I like to call 
basically like filling your space. Like it's a really interesting theory that I have where you can basically say, okay, I really want something, you know, to fill this space, right? And then you can, well, that's not the best way of describing it. Like, <laughs> okay. Oh, here's a good way of describing it. Okay. So let me go ahead and just, <laughs> let me go ahead and just duplicate this while I explain this the best I can. Okay. So say you're drawing this character, right? And you're like, okay, well, I like this. I like this, but for some reason, I want the arm to basically occupy this space, right? I don't want it to go outside of this, but I don't want it to look like an amputated arm, okay? Well, there's actually ways that you could do that, right? Basically, what you'd have to do is you would have to draw out the arm like that, and then the hand, or basically the bend in the arm would have to be coming straight at you, and then, see what I'm talking about? It's like, I want it to occupy that space, and then you create basically the hand inside of it. Now this is something that I do mainly when I, and if you can't tell, that's like a fist. That, that's a fist coming at you, right? <laughs> it's occupying that space. See, I can demonstrate it like this. See how like I can either have a shape like this or I can have a shape like that. See how now my fist is inside of that shape? That comes in handy when you're doing like kind of loose sketches or you have like a, you know, like a thumbnail or something, and then you draw like a shape like this or like that, and you're like, oh, I like these shapes, you know? Like, let's see if we can fit something in there. It's kind of a fun exercise. I do it more subliminally. Maybe I could teach a complete course on it, but it's more just something that's kind of fun. So I look at this, and that's basically what I'm doing. I'm drawing in this shape and saying, I want something to occupy this space, occupy this space. And so then I'm doing that. But before we go on any further, it's time for a little something special. It is time for the question, where's the button catapult? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, please cast your questions over the castle walls and they'll be answered will be answered by me by me and until then i'm just going to keep finishing up our framework for our vi take a couple questions then we're going to end today's show and then i'm going to upload this psd onto the patreon and you guys are going to go download it those of you who are supporting and i will love you i will love you speaking of that for those of you who are supporting me for just a dollar I am aware that I owe you a love note and I am going to be getting it to you. I'm going to be getting it to you very soon. People who support me for just a dollar get love notes from me every month. Every month. It was the only thing I could think of. It's like, I'll give you a love note. <laughs> and I got a good one in mind. All right, so questions coming in. Questions coming in. Um, uh, <laughs> the scribbly person, I, he just did. I can't do that. Fishy pixels. Don't worry, I can teach you. All right, Shinango is asking, hey Keenan, it seems like the camera is pretty far away from the figure you're drawing. I know you've talked before about how to draw things like hands that are way closer to the camera, but how can you adjust the technique to draw a character from overhead or floor level when the camera is really close to them? Okay, so basically, Shinango, I'm really glad that you asked this question because this is something that bothered me for a long time. And it's like, okay, so how come, okay, so theoretically, how come I can't draw this character, right? How come I can't draw Vi like this, but then have her hand like reaching up like this and then her, and then her fist is like coming right at us, right? How come I can't do that? How come this starts to look weird when there's that much distortion happening? And the reason why is because basically it's, it's a theory of the distance from the camera to the subject, right? Because the camera is further away, Check this out. Okay, so if I reach my hand out towards the camera, see how basically my hand takes up the entire screen. But if I, okay, but basically you wanna take it in terms of proportion. See how it goes from my head down all the way to like my chest? Now if I stand further away from the camera and I do the same thing, notice how now my hand is only the size of my head. That is basically the principle at work. It has to do with the distance from the subject to the camera. The closer something is to the camera, the more you can distort it and get away with it. 
So that's why when you see people do something like this, where it looks kind of like the camera's far away, and then they you know, draw something close, that's why it looks a little bit weird. So just keep that in mind, keep that in mind. And the best way for you to study this is to look at photos, look at photos, get a webcam, take a picture of yourself. I did this when I was doing the Ari piece with their hand like right in front of the camera. I literally just took a picture of my hand and referenced it. And it was really, really nice. All right. Unlike this flickering light. Do you guys see that? Can you guys see this light flickering? I don't know if it's just me. I don't know if it's like something with the power here, if there's like a power outage. A, a blackout is on its way. Um, but next question. Next question coming in from... Uh, hmm, hmm. Oh, Fishy Pixels. How would you go about doing legs of different races? I was like, what? Oh, my. Are you talking like... Asian, Hispanic, black people, like they all kind of have the same legs, but <laughs> he's talking about satyrs, werewolves, even aliens, never get the legs right. Okay, goat legs. Okay, this is a great question because um, it will actually employ a similar technique. It will employ a very similar technique. Um, and that is, again, working with ellipses and shapes. Okay, so say you had, let's just take the same figure and let's draw some goat legs on it. Actually, I shouldn't have erased that. I should keep that up. Did I? Uh, okay, we'll just use this one. This one's good. Okay, so let's say, hey, we don't want regular legs anymore. We want goat legs. Same thing is going to apply. You're gonna start going down to the knee, right? But then what I want you to do is consider the joint, right? And then the goat leg actually goes back. It goes back like this, and then it goes back down. Okay, so you're gonna see a little bit of this happening. There's gonna be a bend that goes back and then it's gonna come back down like that. And then you're gonna have your hooves. Hooves on the ground, look at that. And then you're gonna go back again. Keep in mind where the balance point of this hoof is or this hoof, hoof. And then you're going to put the other balance point where there, okay? So you're gonna have a lot of distortion happening here. You're probably not even gonna see the back part of the hoof. You're gonna see the, the knee and it's gonna go back, and the other hoof is going to be right there. Interesting, no? So yeah, just keep in mind your balance points and keep, think in terms of shapes and 3D, 3D architecture. I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> 3D thinking. Think 3D, if you will. So that's how I'd go about giving her goat legs. Same principles, just but the balance points. Balance points are very, very important. That's one thing that I see a lot of people kind of screwing up on. I screwed up, up on it tons when I was first learning how to do this stuff. I was like, how do they make it look like their character is actually like balanced and not gonna fall over? You know, it's just simple balance points. So do that and you will live long and prosper. Alrighty, people's last question coming in from uh, Sinister Art. How do I make things look squishy? That is not a question. <laughs> Well, I guess it is, but um, squishy. I guess it's because it is, it's, it's clay. I'm molding my digital clay as I have taught you guys to do. So that is why my stuff looks squishy because you should be working with sculptures. You should sculpt your things into place. If you like it, take this technique if it works for you, try it out. I've noticed some of you guys on the Facebook have been trying it out and been getting great results. But the real last question, last question, um, Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, last question. Oh, great question. Colo Beans is asking a great question. How do you get more exposure if you're a small artist? Mm. We're gonna end on this. All right, now this could be something that we could devote an entire other daily to or a thoughtful to, but I will say this. The best way that I've ever found to get exposure as a small artist is A, Enter contests, enter contests, whatever you're doing. If you're doing comics, enter comic co contests, uh, enter local art contests, uh, go to conventions. This is the number one thing. Getting a booth at a small convention or even like a bigger convention will cost you anywhere from 200 to $300, right? For a small little artist alley booth, okay? Now you gotta scrounge that money together or split it with somebody else, but I guarantee you, oh, it's totally burning out now. Look at this, it is totally dying. <laughs> It's like gonna pop in my face. Hang on. Yeah, it's dead. That thing is dead. 
Anyway, as I was saying, I'm going to unscrew this before it explodes and causes a fire. Um, yeah, look at that. Totally dead. It's like burnt too. Crazy. All right. But anyway, as I was saying, I'll finish this off in the dark. Go to conventions, split a table, do whatever you have uh, to do to get a table because here's what I found. You make a couple prints of your art, you'll easily make that money back. And, but this is the most important part, you will network with all of your other booth buddies, right? Because there's usually going to be about 15, 20, 30 other artists that bought booths just like you. And some of those people are going to be, actually quite a few of those people are going to be from the industry, right? I went to WonderCon in Anaheim last year, met Samwise Didier, right? The art director for Blizzard. Uh, if you go to PAX, you know, um, I don't know if there's Artist Alley stuff there, but just, just go to conventions. You will meet people from the industry. You'll be able to get critiques. You'll be able to get exposure, meet people, get cards and, and all that good stuff. Go to conventions. All right. That is my best advice to you. And post on the forums. Post on the forums. Like post on the Facebook, post on my Facebook. You never know. Like I might see you I might want you for one of my projects or I could refer you, you know, to uh, my buddies at Riot. Um, so yeah, just get in contact with people, find out, uh, where people are, find out what conventions people are going to and go there and meet up network and you will have a good time. Alrighty people. So we have actually gone for about 40 minutes and that means it's time to sign off. So thank you guys so much for joining me live on Twitch, people on YouTube, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't, don't forget, if you want to pick up this PSD, just click that link. If you're on YouTube, people on Twitch, I'll post the link to the Patreon if you want to go support. And once again, thank you guys so much. It means a lot. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys this Thursday for our good old thoughtful speech. Until then, you guys take care. See ya.